So hey, I wanted to take you on a tour through my production of my most recent animated short. Show you a lot of tips and tricks on how to overcome technical issues as well as artistic problems you have during production of your film. Mainly to show you exactly how not to do it. I have the fail counter. I think the numbers speak for themselves. Let's get to it. So I wanted to make an animation. So I wanted to make a car animation. Basically, I had no idea what I wanted to do. So the first thing I did was to open up Houdini, which I had never used before, and try to make something that looked cool. And after a lot of research, I actually figured out the basics of Houdini. With the help of a tutorial by CG Monkey King, I managed to make this setup, which is a lot of small sticks, which are just scattered all over the surface of the, of the geometry. And because of Houdini's procedural nature, I could easily just swap the mesh for my other parts and then make the different scenes like that. And everything went smoothly with the import into Blender with the Alembic. Actually, the, the geometry, even though I had a couple of million polygons, it was very, very smooth, as long as it didn't go into edit mode. So I mixed it up with a couple of techniques I learned from Andy Burrs in Gleb Alexandro's Space VFX tutorial. And I made these lines, these lava lines in the mesh. So if you take a look at the shader, you can see here that the first part we have is the lava mask. And that part is generating just these streaks of lava. And just to, to mix it up a bit, I added another uh, mask with a bit of crunch in it just to put it on top. Then another thing that I used was something I call volume masks. I'm not sure what the proper name is, but it's basically to take an empty and let's convert it to a sphere, then it's easy to represent in 3D. You can go into the node editor and find a gradient node and change it to either spherical or quadrolic spherical. The quadrolic spherical will just give you a better fall off. Then you have to connect it to a texture a coordinate node and pick the object and set the output to object. Now you can see that if you take a look at the gradient node, you'll actually be able to see the volume gradient in the viewport and you can move the empty around and see how it's affecting the mesh. So to add a bit more interest to this effect, I also added a lot of noise on top. So what I did was actually to make two different mapping nodes with the mapping just a little bit offset in the x-axis, I believe. And then I mixed that depending on a mosh grape texture and plugged that into the gradient. Then I added the multiply node to apply the mask to the lava lines and a soft light node to add a bit more punch and intensity to the orange colors. I find that the soft light blending mode is always good at giving some extra punch. And then I added some flow noise, which looks freaking gorgeous from here. Kind of. So the next thing I did was to add the emission shader. I used a add node with an animated value to make the intensity go up and down, which gave it a more organic feel, I suppose. So this is how the final result looks in Eevee. But of course you get more details with cycles. For this short film, I did the compositing inside Blender and did some post effects in After Effects. One of the very important things when doing compositing is to remember to add a mist pass to your renders. Mist passes, they add a lot of atmosphere to the scene and they also give a very good sense of depth, like depth of field does. In the end, I added some lens distortion and with the lens distortion node, you can also add some jitter. And I usually do this and just mix between the two nodes, one with jitter and one without. I also added a vignette node group that I usually use in all my renders and a non sharp mask node. I'll put a link to both of these note packs in the description. As part of a good workflow, I always save out all my passes into EXR files. Actually, for this project, I used one multi-layer EXR, which is just one file which contains all the passes. Saving out your passes is always good practice, and keeping the original passes around can save you a lot of render time in the end. This was something I learned from working at a studio, and it has benefited my personal projects a lot too. Another thing I learned was also to always make hardware renders, or workbench renders, or play blasts, or whatever you want to call them, but very quick renders of your scenes, then you'll have to cut all of these play blasts together into the final film. And then in the end, when you're satisfied with the result, you know exactly how many frames you need to render. This way, you will not waste time rendering frames you don't need in the end, or maybe rendering scenes which you will cut completely. It can also help you get a very good flow in your edits. A super important thing to remember is to keep the rendering time of your previous short. Otherwise, the point with the previous kind of vanishes. I really hope the awesome Blender developers will be able to fix this issue because right now, even though Eevee is blazing fast in the viewport, exporting the frames to an MP4 or even a PNG sequence can take a couple of seconds per frame, which is just too much. The process of making this film was not great, and I actually made some of these play blasts yesterday. Not as a part of planning out the animation, so... Jokes aside, it's a really good way to plan out your animations before rendering, and I definitely learned it from this project that I have to do it for the future. So that was it for the breakdown of the first shots of this film. If you'd like to see more, please let me know which shot you would like me to break down next. I also added the link to the source file if you want to check it out for yourself. Okay guys, stay happy. Daniel is out.